ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Now, so in the previous section, we have dis performed a discussion of time-dependent perturbation theoretical treatment of a two-state system characterized by wave functions psi l and psi m. We are more or less working with the understanding that psi l has lower energy, psi m has higher energy, but it can be the other way around, it does not matter. In doing that, if you remember, we have written the wave function of the perturbed system as a linear sum of two wave functions, where Cm is the coefficient of the uh, state that is not populated at zero time. Okay, so if you are talking about absorption spectroscopy, the higher state, and we have derived this expression that dCm dt is equal to minus i by h cross. An integral over space multiplied by an exponential term, an exponential factor in time. Now, the next step is to use the expression for the first order correction to the Hamiltonian, which is this. Well, actually, this multiplied by minus mu, mu x, ok. Put it in there and see. Uh, how the expression evolves, okay. That is what we are going to do now. Yes, yeah. How do we get the Hamiltonian as minus mu x into E x, all right. So, the question is how do I know that this Hamiltonian, uh, sorry, first order term. Uh, does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, so that one was missing. How do I know that the correction term is minus mu x into E x? Because if you remember how this wave mechanical treatment of quantum mechanics uh, is uh, carried out, we always start from classical mechanics, do not we? Right? When you uh, worked with the uh, harmonic oscillator, for example, how did you write the Hamiltonian? You wrote the Hamiltonian. Uh, well, the kinetic energy part is the same anyway, but for the potential you wrote half k a k x square, right. Where, where did we get that from? We got that from our understanding from classical mechanics that for a simple harmonic oscillator half k x square is the potential energy. Here also we are trying to think how we can model our system. So, building model is a very important step in any theoretical treatment. What is the model that you want to use? Of course, then the question that comes is that is the model correct or does the model apply and if it does, how far does it apply? So, the model we are using here is that we are modeling this uh, molecule as an electric dipole okay? and we are only working in the x direction, so mu x. We are modeling light as an oscillating electric field, we are neglecting everything else. Why? Because uh, this electric dipole electric field interaction is going to be the strongest among all the interactions that are possible within this model. You can start with x, y, z does not matter, ok. What we will do is this, we will get some expression for x direction only. Now, do you think for an isotropic radiation, isotropic radiation means uh, in all directions you have oscillation. For isotropic radiation, uh, you will get the same expression right for E x, E y and E z right, then it is very easy to combine them. That is what we will actually do in the next class, okay. A factor of 3 comes in, that is all. Any other question? Any other question? Okay, good. So, let, let us uh, tidy up this a little bit before we go ahead and put it there. What is the first order correction term for the Hamiltonian? It is minus mu x into E x of course, we will now write the expression of E x into 2 E x 0 
into cos 2 pi nu t all right now see this is what is going to go in here all right and what should we try to do we should try to uh, separate the factors right the one in uh, spatial coordinates and one in temporal coordinate time so i think you can see from this expression and that expression that it appears that the problem should become simpler if we convert this cosine term cosine factor to exponential terms sum of exponential terms because i already have something that is an exponential term in time time okay if i write this cosine in the exponential form then it should become easier to handle this problem okay so see please understand the line of thinking uh, this part is sometimes intimidating for us chemists because we see a lot of algebra and what we tend to do is we tend to remember all of it all right that being said and now we have to be careful because this is the point where uh, my derivation and gravis derivation become different okay so I, what do i write minus mu x e x 0 what is cos k t e to the power i k t plus or minus e to the power minus i k t sure plus and is there an i multiplied somewhere no that is for sign so it is something like this uh, and is there a half right yes so i can just do it step by step 2 e x 0 multiplied by half e to the power I will write like this exponential 2 pi i nu t plus exponential minus 2 pi i nu t is that right is that right A whole by 2 I have written already you cannot read it only because my handwriting is bad 2 ex 0 multiplied by half okay of course this 2 and that 2 thankfully cancel off so i have one uh, it sounds very strange if i say i have one two less to think of anyway is this expression correct i'll modify this a little bit and i'll modify that a little bit also so what i do is uh, here instead of h cross let me write it completely as h here and 2 pi here what am i trying to do i am trying to make these two expressions completely compatible here i already have 2 pi right so why don't i divide by h and multiply it by h why did i do this i did it so that the two expressions look similar so it becomes a little simpler for us in the next step also here now i have h nu here i have h nu h nu and e are of the same dimensions right okay so just demonstrating that these two are actually dimensionally consistent there is no problem let me now write i said there is one minus one here and one minus one here multiply one by one it becomes plus one right right or wrong according to Greville, it does not so the, this is where the difference begins okay i divided by h cross what else do i have here i have ex0 ex0 is a constant right ex0 is a constant so i keep it here i'll put mu x inside the integral because uh, as you have seen when we derive the selection rules for uh, your uh, vibration and rotation mu x can actually take up different terms for different problems so I, I cannot keep mu x outside the integral i have to take it inside so when i do that this is what i get i am taking mu x inside so i write psi m mu x psi l integrated over all space does that look familiar what is it yes that is our transition moment integral that is we have been seeking so far we wanted to know where transition moment integral came from now you know the answer transition moment integral came from this time dependent perturbation theory, theoretical treatment of 
transition between two states ok. Even before I write the remaining term remaining factor tell me this what happens when transition moment integral becomes 0 c m is equal to 0 step by step do not jump steps right d c m d t is 0 right you start with c m equal to 0. So, this is what we are saying c m versus t initially it is 0 this is 0 0 point right and initial time it is something like this. So, if d c m d t is also 0 then after any time t you do not reach anywhere right your c m remains 0 ok. So, that is that is why we have been talking about transition moment integral in our previous discussion. If transition moment integral is equal to 0 then the system remains in the lower energy state or rather the initial state characterized by L quantum number L. There is no question of it mixing with the state characterized by quantum number M ok d c m d t equal to 0 and we will uh, come back to it and put it in a little different way actually it is the same thing a little later great. So, this is your transition moment integral fine multiplied by now I have two exponential terms right first one is exponential 2 pi i by h E m minus E l what then what do I do plus h nu right h nu multiplied by t have I written it correctly I also get confused when there are too many brackets have I closed the bracket in the right place is ok then I can write the second term plus e to the power 2 pi i by h E m minus E l minus h nu t close second bracket close third bracket is this correct. Is this correct? Shushnato, correct? Can we go ahead? Have you understood all this? Any question, Vikas? No question? Very good. Okay. Now we need to understand what these functions would look like. But before that, maybe let us do the integration. So, this is the first integration that we promised to do today. And this is where I get an answer that is different from this uh, gray bill. So, I want you to do it. So, so far you agree with me right whatever I have done. Now, what I want is I want to know what is C m how do I get a value of C m your derivative is known ok. So, C m would be what C m 0 plus this multiplied by whatever changes. So, basically you integrate the right hand side with respect to time and when you integrate with respect to time what are the limits 0 to t exactly. Can you do the integration and tell me what the first term turn out, turns out to be what hmm. you are saying that because you know board resonance condition ok. Right now let us say it may or may not be equal to 1. Okay, let us say this is a constant forget what it is some constant k all right with that let us do the integration. So, uh, what Manthan is saying is actually correct what he is saying is the second term the in the second term we have E m minus E l minus H nu is not that equal to 1 it is equal to 1 when E m minus E l equal to H nu. But then even here this is also equal to 1 when E l minus E m is equal to H nu right. So, we will talk about that that is actually what brings us to the second important aspect of uh, this discussion that is Bohr resonance condition. But before that please do the integration and tell me what you get. Meanwhile, I will go just go ahead and write this.
Shobhana, what's the answer? You are getting negative of this right, I also have got negative of it, but I do not know why in Greville this is the expression that is given, it does not matter I can always write a minus sign outside and what happened to this uh, h cross that got cancelled during integration right. So, uh, so for now what we will do is we will go by Greville's uh, expression because it does not really matter, my expression really has that minus sign outside and it looks like you are also getting that, what about you Vantan? Okay. Just tell me do you get this or do you get its negative? You get a negative. Okay. Let us go, just go with this expression for now. Let us not bother about the minus sign outside because as you will see eventually we take mod square. So, we do not have to worry about minus. What is the second term? Plus 1 minus exponential what happened? Minus 1 aa na? Ah, oh, mera bhi wahi aa hai. But then Greville has written the book not I not you. So, we will follow the, 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 the see we will follow it, but it does not matter that is the point I am trying to make. You can write a minus sign outside it does not matter because eventually what is important is your uh, mod square. Of course, physically what it means is that DCMDT can never be negative is not it, DCMDT has to be positive. So, that is the only place where I have a little bit of a hitch. Anyway, we will just continue from here 2 pi i by h e m minus e l minus h nu t divided by 2 pi i by h e m. I do not have the 2 pi i by h. Hmm? E m minus E l minus h nu. Yes, because we have cancelled the h cross. So, this is ok except for the minus sign let us proceed with this. Now, look at these two terms. Will you agree with me if I say that most of the time both the terms are actually very very close to 0. Will you agree with me if I say that? We are dividing by h right here, dividing by h here means what? h is a very small number, what is the value of h? Huh. So, let, if I may digress a little bit, a very favorite question uh, in BSc that was there when I was a student, I do not know if it is still favorite, is that what would happen if h was equal to 1? So, if h was equal to 1, then this what is the product of uncertainties? That is h by 2 pi right. So, the problem is that uncertainty would enter the real world, macroscopic. macroscopic world not real world yeah macroscopic world. So, everything U, I, chalk, board everything would be uncertain right. So, thankfully H is not equal to 1, H is a very small number. So, because of that what happens is that the fall off of both the exponential terms is rather sharp ok. We can safely say that both the terms are actually equal to 0 unless the denominator is equal to 0 ok. If the denominator is equal to 0 then what will happen? The term will blow up right ok. So, first thing is both the terms cannot survive together because the conditions for blowing up is E m minus E l is equal to H nu or E l minus E m equal to H nu. Of course, both cannot be satisfied at the same time. H nu is that positive or negative? H nu frequency is always positive, H is a universal constant that is also positive. So, right hand side is also positive, is always positive. 
So, that means left hand side has to be positive. So, what does the first one mean? E m minus E l is positive that means, E l is smaller than sorry E m ok. What is the uh, step that is what is this uh, the uh, level that is populated at 0 time L or m? L. Kya bol rahe L bol rahe ho. L m anyway L right L L for lower. This is the situation in that case. For first one E m minus E l equal to H nu this is E m this is E l. For the second one the upper one is E l the lower one is E m ok and I will just draw the arrow to indicate the uh, nature of transition. So, the first one E m minus A l equal to H nu well uh, uh, it is a little strange because uh, this is actually the second term right E m minus A l equal to H nu that is uh, satisfied by the second term not the first one E m minus E l minus H nu equal to 0. So, when E m minus E l minus H nu equal to 0 what we are essentially saying is that we are dealing with an absorption the transition is absorption going from lower to higher level. When E l is higher and E m is lower we are saying that we are dealing with emission that is all ok. So, this term is going to blow up when we discuss absorption. This term is going to blow up when we have emission. right but the point to note is that for absorption as well as emission the terms are exactly similar right is that right 1 minus e to the power kt divided by k you can write both in the same way it's just that k is different depending on whether you are talking about absorption or emission same kind so please remember this please remember so what i'm trying to say is that the expression for cm for absorption and emission should actually be same is not it because e to the power k t by k, k that is all it, that is there understand what I am saying. Well, 1 minus e to the power k t by k that is the general form that is there for absorption as well as emission. So, the C m or later on when we talk about C m star they should have the same kind of expression for both the processes. The only thing that we have to remember is that when we talk about absorption, I mean induced absorption of course. What is the meaning of induced here? Induced mean something that is brought about by external light. Second part is perhaps a little more difficult to understand. When I talk about emission here, I am talking about induced emission or stimulated emission. Emission that is brought about by presence of light not spontaneous emission. As you know if you excite something many times it just gives out light by itself it has to come down we are not talking about that kind of emission here. We are talking about induced or stimulated emission please do not forget this. This is a very important point at this juncture ok. So, well I had promised two integrals today, but looks like will we ha will have to be satisfied with one because our time is almost up. Let me just write the final expression. So, what do we deal with uh, uh, which one do we deal with to start with absorption or emission? We will deal with absorption, absorption happens first emission happens subsequently. So, for absorption the expression for C m turns out to be then 1 minus well I should write the whole thing E x 0 multiplied by your transition moment integral multiplied by one minus exponential 
2 pi i by h E m minus E l plus h nu no minus h nu sorry multiplied by T divided by E m minus E l minus h nu. This is the closing expression for today and opening expression for the next class. What we will do now is that we are going to take this CM, CM gives you amplitude, okay. Amplitude of what? Uh, psi m, capital Psi m. Now, if I take mod square of that amplitude, do you know that uh, this mod square of amplitude gives me the uh, contribution or probability, yeah? So, we want an expression for mod square of CM that is what we will work out the next day, a little more algebra that is all. And then we are going to reach another important observation. What have we learned today? Let us summarize. We have learned two things. We have understood where transition moment integral comes from and we have understood that C m is 0 if transition moment integral is equal to 0. C m equal to 0 means there is no mixing of states brought about by uh, light or in other words there is no transition brought about by light. That is the first important thing that we have learned. The second important thing that we have learned is Bohr resonance condition. We have seen that unless Bohr resonance condition is fulfilled, you cannot have an induced transition, may it be absorption, may it be emission, okay. We have been taking Bohr resonance condition uh, uh, for granted so long and it makes sense also, right. Even without doing any math, it makes sense if we say delta e equal to h nu, we can understand it from our uh, common sense. But what we see is that we can arrive at using uh, uncommon sense as well, okay. So, these are the two take home messages for uh, from uh, today's discussion. Next day, we are going to talk about mod C m square and then we will get access to one more thing. See, so far, whatever information has come is from the space part, right. The time part has given us one information that is your uh, resonance condition, but there is something more that will come out from here. From here we learn that what kind of system are we uh, talking about so far, how many levels? Two levels. What are the energies? E L and E M. So, what kind of spectrum do I expect? One line, right. One line, no width. When we do the rest of the math here, we will see that even for this system where you have E L and E M two energies, you can never have a zero line width. Some finite line width will always be there that will come from the time part, right. So, and that is what is going to be related to your uncertainty principle. So, that line width that you get is called natural line width, okay. This is what we will discuss the next day and then we will go on to what is called your uh, Fermi's golden rule okay. and we will also talk about the Einstein's discussion and we will see what is the relationship between the different absorption coefficients, okay. This is what it is for today.